In the previous section, we focused on defining our domain. That included building a domain object and also creating an image repository for storing data in a database. In this section, we're going to focus on creating a file upload controller. In the section, we're going to create a service that handles storing images on disk, as well as using our repository from the previous section to write to the database. Then we'll build a Spring MVC controller to route incoming web requests to that service. Finally, we'll test it all out using the command line curl tool. In this video, we're going to focus on building the image handling service. Doing that, we're going to create, first of all, an auto-wired Spring service. We'll add methods to look up, store, and delete images, both on disk and in the database. And then finally, we're going to preload some test data. Now here we are in our IDE, where we've left off in section one. We had just created the image repository. To get things going, let's go create an image service. Now the point of having a service is when you need to have one centralized collection of functionality. And according to the book, Domain Driven Design by Eric Evans, uh, this should be a service that does not carry any state with it. Now here we're going to put our operations, both inter interact with the disk store and with the database in one place. And then later on when we create our Spring MVC controller for the web layer, it will invoke the service and provide a nice form of cohesion. First, we're going to define a constructor call to launch everything. And this is where it's recommended with Spring Framework to use constructor based injection. In this case, we're going to need a copy of the image repository. And we also want the resource loader from Spring. This is going to be used to interact with the file system. Now let's go ahead and create fields for both of those items. I want to flag it for auto wiring. What we have now is a service annotated service. This means that Spring Boot, when it does its component scanning, is going to spot this object and automatically create an instance of it for us and put it in the application context. It's also going to see the auto wired annotation and try to invoke the constructor by passing in these fields to it. And this will give us the objects we need to interact with. Now, one other thing we need to define in our service is actually the target folder where things will be uploaded to. Here we're going to define a local path directory. And in a sense, what we're going to do is upload files to the local system where the application is running. For this course, that's an adequate solution. But if you were to take this app into a cloud native solution, you would want somewhere to offload the files to and not store them in the same location that the app itself is located at. Now let's create a method to look up a single image by file name using the resource loader. What we're doing is doing a get resource lookup and we're returning a Spring Framework resource type. Now resource types expand a lot of different types. We can reference file-based systems, class path. We can even reference uh, HTT-based things out on the web. In this case, we're going to deal with a local file-based system, so we're using the file prefix. We're telling it to go look into our root folder, uh, add a slash to it, and finally the file name itself as the lookup criteria, and hand back a resource handle to that object. Next, we'll add a method for creating new images based on the Java multipart file object that we intend to write into our controller and some Java NIO operations. Okay, here we've done defined a create image routine, and we're expecting to receive a multi-part file object as the input. Essentially, it's going to check that as long as the file is not empty, use the Java NIO files copy operation and copy that input stream into a new uh, destination. In this case, we're using Java NIO's paths operation to start at the root folder defined up above and then resolve it to the file's original file name. 
that will copy the file into our new file store. Step two is to then create a new entry in our database under the same heading. Now for this course, we're just storing the file name and nothing else, but this would be a, a keen opportunity to grab other metadata based upon the image. Uh, I've seen other systems store things like uh, f-stop, exposure data, other, other metadata that can be found in the image, but we're not going to do that here. Now finally, let's code up a way to delete existing images. Now here we've created the delete image operation based on file name. In this case, we're going to use the custom finder that we built in our repository, find by name, to get back an image object. Then we're going to turn around and delete it in the database. And finally, we're going to use the Java NIO operation, delete if exists. And in this case, with the paths, we're able to construct a path name to it using, again, the root folder and the file name. For development purposes, it's really handy if we can preload some data. For loading data, it's always handy to use Spring Boot's command line runner. Command line runners are automatically invoked once all the beans in an app context are defined. Now here we've defined a new bean definition, a command line runner. We're calling this setup. This indicates that this command line runner bean needs to have access to the image repository that we were using earlier. With that in place, we're ready to go. First, we're going to use Spring's file system utils to clean out the uploaded the upload root folder. Then we can use a mixture of Spring and Java NIO to create a new folder and then copy in three fake files while also writing their metadata to the database. Now we have all the operations intact, however this isn't quite complete. The idea is we want to return a command line runner so that all these will be invoked when the thing, when this uh, app context starts up. Okay, now that we have this wrapped inside a Lambda expression, we can count on Java 8 to coerce this into a command line runner. Command line runner is a very simple interface. It has a single run method with a variable number of arguments to it. This makes it perfect for Lambda expressions and that we can coerce it to take in a single input and return back a code block for it to run. Something to note is, if you were to take this code to production, you'd probably want to mark this chunk of code to be uh, executed differently. In other words, you don't want it to automatically delete everything. In this case, it's really handy to use Spring's profile setting and you can mark this as only use it in dev so you would have to activate this particular profile in order for it to kick in but because we're demoing this stuff through the course we're just going to leave that out for now now to recap this video we've created a spring service to handle finding creating and deleting images and we also preloaded some test data